here and today we're talking about my top 10 tips to get the most out of the Northwest Chocolate Festival or really any chocolate festival. So the Northwest Chocolate Festival, if you've never been before, is one of the largest craft or bean to bar chocolate festivals in the country. There are over a hundred chocolate makers and the cool part about it is that they aren't big brands like Lindt or Hershey's. These are pretty small brands which gives you a super unique chance to go and meet the makers in person and try their chocolate. And oh yeah, there will be samples. But there are some things you want to know to make it even better and that is why we have today's video. So tip number one, study up. There is one important thing you need to do for sure before you go. And that's learn how to taste craft chocolate. It's not like eating a Hershey bar. There is a little bit of an art and a science to it. And the plus side, you can learn it in about 30 seconds. I've actually done a couple videos on how to taste chocolate. So I'll link them up above and down below so you can get started. But it is gonna give you such a major confidence boost to know how to taste chocolate like a pro. On top of that, it is worth the time right now to sit down, go to the website, see what maker is gonna be there, look at the workshop schedule, see if it looks cool. Like, what is your wish list of chocolate makers? Cause it's gonna be big and crowded and you'll need to know what you're doing. And knowing what the workshops are in advance means you can plan around them. Number two, it is worth busing or lifting or carpooling to the festival. Parking is historically atrocious. It is worth busing, lifting, carpooling, whatever works to reduce the number of cars in that parking lot. Number three, the absolute minimum, minimum you should spend at the chocolate festival is two hours. That's enough time to try some chocolates, maybe attend a workshop or take a break and eat something that's not chocolate so you can go back in for round two. Spending a whole day there is absolutely worth it. I mean, I'm spending two days there nine to five, but it's also really intense your first year or so. A day is ideal, two hours is the minimum. Don't just plan to go in for a half hour, you won't see anything. And yes, going early is a good idea. The closer it gets to like noon, the more packed it gets. And it is worth going for VIP. It, it's expensive, but if you're really interested in seeing a particular maker, that's the way to go because there will be basically no line. Number four, bring water. Water is the unsung hero of chocolate tasting. It's a palate cleanser. You wanna go warm water for that. And being hydrated during the festival is going to make it so much nicer. You won't have that lovely sugar crash. It kind of feels like being weirdly drunk sometimes if you had too much chocolate without enough water. So drink that water. You will want warm tap water or hot if you prefer. Just don't do cold water because then you won't actually clean your palate between tastings and you'll just have a lot of chocolate left there and you'll just taste whatever you ate first. There are water coolers on site all around the festival. The thing is they can be really hard to spot. So I'd recommend just having your water bottle ready to go and then refill it as you go rather than trying to find it first thing when you're tired at nine in the morning. Number five, bring snacks. But in addition to being a palate cleanser, again, they help deal with any kind of sugar crash you're gonna have during the event. It's great. I recommend something high in protein. So my usual snack of choice is string cheese, believe it or not, or jerky. And the more traditional palate cleansers are going to be apple slices and water crackers. So bring just a little bit of something that makes sense for you and your needs, and you'll feel so much better in a few hours. And also the food trucks, while they're very good, often can have super long lines. So it's just nice to have it ready to go. Tip number six, bring some cash. There are ATMs on site, but they often have long lines around the same time that the Wi-Fi has gone down, which totally will happen at least once. And it's nice to just be able to pay for your chocolate and go if you are buying chocolate. Bring like 20 bucks. You don't need to bring a ton of money, but 20 to 40 is a good amount to just have ready in case you find some bars that you're really excited about. Now we've gone over the prep, let's talk about the tips for once you're there. Number seven, watch for limited edition chocolate. So I usually tell people to not feel obligated or pressured to buy anything in the festival, but there is a major exception, and that is the limited edition chocolate. So at this point, there's a whole number of makers that bring chocolate specifically for the festival, and they will never make it ever again or they will only make it for the festival. Either way, they will let you know, and so you should definitely try them, and if you like them, 
buy them that moment or forever hold your peace because I am sitting here still regretting not buying the green bean debarge pan bar from two years ago. So definitely, if you see something, buy it that minute. It will likely sell out before the end of Saturday. Number eight, pace yourself. One or two things is gonna probably happen fast if you aren't watching. Either you'll feel full from eating too much chocolate or you're gonna hit palate fatigue, probably likely the palate fatigue first. Eating a lot of chocolate and not going slowly between them, the palate fatigue hits hard and hits fast and it's not fun. So instead, pace yourself. The normal recommended amount of bars to try during a chocolate tasting, for example, is four. That's a good time, for example, to make sure you've had some water, or have you had a snack, or have you taken a break and sat for a few seconds. There is no shame in taking breaks. I will be taking breaks the entire festival. You can join me if you like. We'll have a, we'll have a break party. It'll be awesome. Number nine, take notes. You're going to be eating a ton of chocolate by a ton of different makers from a bunch of locations and you are totally going to forget what you've eaten about an hour later. They don't have to be fancy notes, they can be just like a notepad. Some years I've even literally just recorded my voice while holding the bar and that's been my reminder. Whatever works for you, whatever floats your boat, just take notes. And finally, tip number 10, have fun. This is your chance to talk to the makers. I mean, how cool is that that you get to meet the people who made the chocolate, who work with the farmers, and sometimes the farmers are right there and you can ask them questions about cacao. I mean, this is the neatest stuff. You get to learn all these awesome things, and if you're just there to get the most chocolate, you can do that. But then you won't remember what you ate, you won't know much about it, you'll have this great jar of samples, and that's it and you could get so much more out of this entire experience just by having a good time. Like, take those breaks, eat the snacks. I would highly recommend coming with a friend because it is so much more fun with other people. Our group, for example, we like to get together and chat out what we found at the festival, and it's really fun. Because then we get to just be like, oh yeah, I totally saw this cool bar, you need to try it, and then we go and try it, and it's a way more awesome time. So those are my top 10 tips for having the best time at the Northwest Chocolate Festival, or really any chocolate festival. And I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Have you been to a chocolate festival? Are there tips you think I should have added? Please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear all about it. And hopefully I will catch some of you at the chocolate festival on Saturday. Laters! And for those of you watching this during the festival, please drink more water. This is my personal reminder and your reminder, drink some water.